Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Simon. Welcome to another episode of Good Omens. As Zuko just joins me up here as we begin our intro. Um, so this is episode five of six, and I've really enjoyed this show so far. It's been very, very quirky. I expected it to be fairly quirky, just going off of the... Um, the adverts and, you know, some of the posters that I saw. And the fact that the actors in it are also known for their quirky sides. You know, David Tennant has a very quirky side, as does Michael Sheen. Um, but it's been really, really enjoyable. And so far, I don't think I've met anyone who's not liked it. You know, both book readers and non-book readers alike. Everyone has only had really good things to say about this. And I'm the same. I I've thoroughly enjoyed the first four episodes. And, and the way it's kind of twisted and turned and not gone the way that I expected, you know, from the super long introduction and backstory of Aziraphale and, um, and Crowley to, you know, their kind of little breakup. Um, and to some of the supporting characters like Jack Whitehall, you know, he, he, I was never expecting him to be in this. Um, you know, they've, they've really kind of carried the episode when, you know, we've not had our main characters on screen. Um, we're really starting to ramp up now. We've got, all four horsemen of the apocalypse who've been notified that the end of the world is nigh. They're on their way. Adam has certainly seemed to have come into his power. He is changed very much. And his friends are right in the epicenter of his... Um, I'm not going to say rage, but his influence. And um, they're kind of being held against their will right now. But at the end of the last episode, we saw Aziraphale uh, try to speak to God directly. It didn't quite go as he'd planned. Um, he couldn't get through to God. He got through to, like, God's receptionist. Um, and then he ended up getting sent, presumably, up to heaven after accidentally walking into the circle. Um, so whether he is gone now, in terms of, like, he is going up to heaven to join the forces of good, I, I, I don't know. Um, you know, but his bookstore started to bear down, so that's gone. And I've got a feeling that uh, Crowley is gonna is gonna find out, and it'll be interesting to see his reaction. Um, he himself has had to dodge some bullets because um, the demons who had been on his case found out that he had not been doing what he was supposed to be doing, and so um, they came after him. And after you know a very good trick with the holy water and trapping one of the demons inside of an answer machine. He seems to be free to pursue whatever it is he needs to do. So, um, yeah, there's also a really weird sex scene as well in the last episode. So, um, yeah, we're going to jump into this to see what happens next. Before we do, I want to say a big thank you to Frank Tremel, the lone detective, and Karen Abel for being Patreon super supporters. Um, you can find a link to Patreon in the description below where I have full reactions to everything I watch. So, uh, yeah, let's jump in and let's see what happens in episode number five. Huh. It's quite ironic, he's in a burning bookstore. It's a very hellacious scene. Oh! And the fire departments have started. Oh no. Aww. you say if I told you that this hand that just exorcised a demon clean off the surface of the earth? I'd say somebody needs to come inside and have <laughs> a nice cup of tea. Look, young Newt, he's still out there. Enthralled to heathen ways. And I won't say anything more about the body you discorporated. We can take the sword out of your celestial wages. I was in the middle of celestial wages? What do you even use them on? To be returned. Huh. Without a body? That's ridiculous. It is. Obviously. What are you going to do? You can't possess them. Demons can. You're not a demon, you're an angel. Is he going to jump into Crowley's body? Or is he going to fall? Where are you going? Smile! Smile! Okay, there you go. Whoa! Even the dogs, like, do the shit a bit much. <laughs> Food hasn't been that good lately. Didn't have anything on 
for the rest of the afternoon. Next thing, I'm doing a million light year freestyle dive into a <laughs> boiling sulfur. Huh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Oh, only he can see him. Question, not certain. Never done this before. Can you hear me? Of course I can hear you. Afraid I've rather made a mess of things. Receive wisdom from those who have gone before. We are here to receive your wisdom, Madam Tracy. Madam Tracy. Very good weather for a seance. Please give me your wisdom. Special the weather with your psychicness. I ride to where the end of the world begins. Sounds like fun. Huh. I love the fact that Famine still has to go through customs. Oh crap. He's already there. Death. When did you get here? I never went away. Your tea's getting cold, Lord. It's been a long time. But now we ride. Yes, now we ride. I love that. It's as if he's the lead horseman. You tell my rock. Is Aziraphale going into her body? Is it our wrong? No, something real. Something real. <laughs> Uh. Is that you? Oh. It's zero fail. Yeah, oh my god. Well, I want to speak to Ron or Marot. You've never spoken to me like this before. <laughs> Remember your heart condition. He's I dead. <laughs> Wasn't that touching? <laughs> what a reunion. Right. Well, uh, lovely to meet you all. What you did to the N25 with a stroke of demonic genius stuff. Ah, <laughs> The traffic jam is being caused by problems on the M25, the freeway that circles London. It's the M25. You can't just get out and have a wiggle in the middle of the road. I can, and I will. Oh, wow. Hell, oh, the great beast. What'd you say, Horace? You talking about your penis, or...? <laughs> oh, man. Hell, the great beast. Devourer of worlds. Uh-oh. What? Um, okay, people are starting to... M25 had become oh, unexpected. no. A burning magical ring of fire that surrounded London. Right. Was getting in or out. And a lot of Crowley people have just been... died. Now Crowley was trapped inside it. Oh, she's going to let him out. Yes. Hello, Mr. Cowley. We're calling about an accident you had. It uh, wasn't an accident, Lisa. And this isn't Crowley. Um, how do you know my name? <laughs> I know lots of things, Lisa. I should be grateful to you for setting me free, shouldn't I? I mean, I should thank you personally and meet your friends. Uh-oh. Uh, I'm hanging up the phone now. Too late. Uh. Oh, wow. Okay, this is getting quite... um. Uh graphic. Why is he so scared? Uh oh. Stop this! You just can't break this boat! This is not funny! Come on! Go then go with style! Oh crap! Poor doggy. 
come back, please. Ah. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. What are you doing? Did he just lose his power? That's pretty cool. But I'll have words with your mother. We're going to the airbase, if that's all right with you. I mean, we huh. wouldn't want to go there if it wasn't all right with you. Adam Young, don't think I won't talk to your father. Oh well. <laughs> Who the hell are you? I'm neither of hell nor heaven. What's you are just deaf. About this place anyway. This is a classified communications hub. Not just nuclear destruction, it's chemical too. And my favorite standbys are all chemical. Say what you like. Plutonium may give you grief for thousands of years, but arsenic is forever. The war, the pollution, and then the winter. I like the winter. So cold, so clean, so hungry. They're all, um, looking. <laughs> I like it. I mean, ma'am, I must respectfully ask you to. And here is Crowley. Yes. From a modern car. <laughs> hey, is here for see if I'd ride. Nice dress suits you. Ah, <laughs> this young man won't let us leave it to me. Army human, my friend and I have come a long way. Which one of you did that? Okay, it's the kids. Those kids are in the <laughs> so you, don't move. Okay, everybody in. All the chickens are coming home to roost. No more chickens. Why are they all getting more and more demonic? Master, a friend. He did know what he had to do. So, what are these people like? Don't know. Are they grown ups? <laughs> Putting guns at kids. It's Most American thing ever. Kid, you're on military property. I think you all need to go to sleep now. All you soldiers. <laughs> okay, so the apocalypse is nigh. Um, interesting, very interesting kind of... I don't know whether Adam is Adam again. Or whether he's tricking his friends. And he knows, like... He had to, to get to the airbase to, to meet with the horsemen. Um, or whether he knows he had to do that and he's now going to try and stop them with that knowledge. It's really weird because I don't know how much of the Antichrist is influence, influencing Adam right now. Um, he seems like himself again, if that's possible. Um, also the dog. The dog seems to just be a normal dog again. Um, which I knew that some of Hell had burned away from him when he entered into uh, the cottage. I didn't realize that all of it had. Maybe it's just been the influence of humans, like, and, and Adam and his friends have just completely subdued the hellhound. Um, but either way, everyone's at this airbase for, for the finale. And it's exciting because I, I don't know what's going to happen. And I was sitting there and I was thinking, you know, when they were getting the nuclear bombs and all that set up, I was like, wow, this is, this is moving quickly. You know, it's not even like the the good guys had made it to the airfield before that even happened um but also what i love is the fact that they're all getting slightly more demonic as time goes on as like you know as it's happening you know famines thangs are, are elongating and you know war is bleeding from her eyes and pollution's got all this horrible tar stuff on her um you know and and it just kind of represents the fact that, you know, the world is coming to an end. Um, 
never in a million years did I see Aziraphale possessing someone. And part of me thought that when when they was in heaven and they were like, only demons can can um, you know possess someone. I was like, is he going to become fallen? That would have been a really interesting twist if Aziraphale became fallen in order to be able to possess someone to get his body back um, or to get a body, I guess, and um, try and stop the end of the world, you know. And then you've got Crowley on the other side who was just depressed and getting drunk and has managed to make it all the way. He was, he was wasted in that bar and he's drove from that bar to Tadfield through the burning M25, which, might I add, is an improvement. Um... But also, how how dark was that? The entirety of the motorway just getting blown up. How many kids died in that? You think? Um, that that yeah, that was pretty pretty damn dark. Um, and you know, obviously, I'm expecting a little bit more of that. I don't know. This show was so weird in that you expected it at first. I was kind of like I didn't know what to expect, and then I thought, okay, well, this is going to be kind of like like harmed uh, like humid and, and kind of harmless and then it got really quirky and I was like whoa okay so this is gonna be like the super quirky kind of thing and now it's getting like kind of dark you know and I like that I like that kind of subtle, subtle shift in genres Sorry, I can't get my words out right now um you know that kind of encompasses every little every, there's a little bit of everything in there and, and I really like it um and once again it was just a really 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 good episode that you know is setting up for an interesting finale you know i i've got a feeling someone's gonna end up sacrificing themselves and you know sergeant tadwell maybe um i don't know i don't know who it might be i'm hoping that by the end of it you know obviously earth is gonna survive whether Crowley and Aziraphale are going to be there at the end, I'm not sure. If they both ended up in heaven, that would be interesting. Because I think Azir, I think um, Crowley secretly does want to become an angel. He doesn't. He doesn't want to be a demon. I think is is as obvious as anything. He's referenced it multiple times about how he fallen in with the wrong lot, and you know he was kind of talking about it again in his drunken stupor. So again, firstly, I want to really see that flushed out and see how it happened. Um, I'm assuming we're going to see God at some point because we've not really seen god yet um and this flaming sword just i don't know if it's it's a constant joke like just a, a bit of a, a laugh or if it's something that's really important i'm not sure um but i guess we'll find out but um yeah i'm looking forward to the finale so thank you very much for watching ladies and gentlemen and i will see you for the next episode